Hello, calculus students. Uh, thanks for tuning in. We're looking at Unit 4, Free Response Question Set A. There's only one question in this set. This is a calculator question, so make sure you have your calculator handy, and it's pretty calculator intensive, this question. You can refresh your memory on the calculator directions. And always at home, read through the general directions so you're comfortable with those for the AP exam. Okay, if you need to pause and refresh your memory about this question, we'll look at it carefully. Uh, careful reading on this one. On this time frame, for t from 0 to 10, water is flowing into a small tub at a rate given by this function f. What I needed to notice is that this is a rate that water is filling in from 0 to 10 minutes. Per minute, time measured in minutes, and in cubic feet is the rate. Okay, we continue reading. From time 5 minutes to 10 minutes, oh, now water starts leaking out. L is that function for the rate at which water is leaking out. So notice that's a rate as well. So if that's the rate that water is flowing in between 0 and 10, that's the rate that the water is flowing out between 5 and 10. Since it's a rate, that will be cubic feet per minute for those two functions. Alrighty, we continue reading carefully. Uh, the volume of water in the tub at any moment is given by a function wt. w of t. Okay, let's read part A carefully. This is a three-point portion of this problem. And let's think about part A. At time t equals 3, so we have to notice that's in this time frame, and the water has not started leaking out yet, so that's important. At time equals 3 minutes, we're just going to use that function f of t. There are 2.5 cubic feet of water in the tub. Write an equation for local linearity. Remember that's an equation of the tangent line, and then we can use that to approximate. The equation of a tangent line of w at t equals 3, and then use the line to approximate the volume in the tub at time 3.5. Alrighty, what I notice is that w of t is the volume in the tub at any moment, but these are rates in that tub at any moment. So really, at time equal to 3, f of 3, which is a rate, is the rate of change of the volume. So since f is a rate, f of 3 is the rate of change at that time, which is the same as w prime of 3. So to find the local linearity, the equation of the tangent line, I need a slope and I need a point. Alrighty, so the slope is going to come from w prime of 3, which is the same as f of 3. Okay, so to find the slope, w prime of 3 is the same as f of 3. I'm going to come up here to my function f. Remember, arc tangent is the same as inverse tangent. And I'm going to plug 3 into that inverse tangent function. Pi over 2 minus 3 for t over 10. Can you pause and plug that into your calculator? Inverse tangent, pi over 2, minus 3 tenths. Pause, and I get 0 0.90409 for the slope. So the slope is 0.90409. I'll keep some more and round at the end. But we're given that at time equals 3, there's actually 2.5 cubic feet of water in the tub. So for an input of 3, my output is 2.5. That implies my equation for local linearity. I'm going to use point slope form is y minus 2.5 is equal to my slope. 0 0.90409 times t minus 3 when I plug in that x coordinate or that t coordinate. So that was my equation for local linearity.
Uh, when we're looking at points, oops, what was my slope? Uh, oops, that was my slope of 0 0.90409. So looking at point totals, you got a point for the slope on this problem. You got a point for coming up with an equation for local linearity. And now we actually have to use that equation that we just found to approximate the volume of water when t is 3.5. So now I can plug in. And what is that? y is equal to 0 0.90409. Plug in at time 3.5. That's 3.5 minus 3. Let me swing that plus 2.5 over. Plus 2.5. Uh, let me make, oops, let me switch. When I pick up my calculator using my uh, local linearity equation, I get 2.952. So W of 3.5 is approximately 2.952 cubic feet at 3.5 minutes using that approximation. Okay, pause and refresh your memory on part B, please. Part B is a two-point portion of this problem. And I'm going to remind myself for part B. What are we asked? Oh, find the second derivative. W, um, the second derivative of W at time equals 8. Please notice at time equals 8, the water is filling, but now water is also leaking for time equals to 8 minutes. Okay, so I'm going to refresh my memory. Since f of t and l of t represent rates of change of volume, and w represents the volume of water in the tub, the rate of change of volume in the tub, which would be w prime, is really just equal to the rate at which the tub is filling minus the rate at which the tub is leaking. That's the volume, that's the rate of change of volume, which is really going to be the filling rate minus the leaking rate. Alrighty, so that implies that the second derivative of w is really just going to be f prime of t minus l prime of t. I'm specifically looking at time equal to 8. So I really need the second derivative of w for time equals 8, which will equal to f prime of 8 minus l prime of 8. Okay, this is pretty calculator intensive right now. So let me pause and show you what I'm going to plug into my calculator. And I'm going to find the numeric derivative for those two things. So grab your graphing calculator. Okay, so the derivative f prime of 8 go to math and derive in the math menu for a numeric derivative. This is the exact notation it looks like when you plug it into your calculator. And we're going to evaluate at x equals 8. Go ahead and plug that into your calculator and get a value. And I'm going to subtract from it this, L prime of 8. And let me show you exactly what we plug into our calculator. Okay, so here's my calculator input for f prime of 8 minus l prime of 8. This gets so messy to plug in, I just want to make sure you can read that. So this is everything I plugged into my calculator to find that second derivative of w at time equal to 8. Okay, you can pause and plug that in. But when I plug that in, the second derivative at t equal to 8 comes out to be approximately negative 0.183. This answer is rounded, or negative 0.182 is what we call truncated. AP will accept either one. If you just chop off all the numbers afterwards, you get this one, but if you round to the nearest thousandth, you get that one, and either one is perfectly fine. Let me see how I would state this, because I need to be a little bit careful. I need to then interpret the meaning of this in the context of this tub filling problem. Okay, so let me think about that for a minute so we can wrap this up. Okay, so this is how AP wanted to see your response. Uh, so at time 8 minutes, the rate at which the rate, the second derivative, the rate at which the rate of change of water 
is changing by negative 0.183 cubic feet per minute per minute. You could also say uh, the rate is decreasing by 0.183 cubic feet per minute per minute would also be acceptable. Okay, always pause so you can kind of learn from what we're going through here. Alrighty, let's move on to part C and read it again if you would. Okay, part C asks us, is there a time t between time 5 and 10 at which the rate of change of volume changes from positive to negative and give a reason for your answer. This is only a one point portion and it's very calculator intensive. I'm going to do this entirely on my calculator. Okay, at that time frame between 5 and 10, remember that's when I was filling and leaking. So in this time frame, oops, we use the rate of change of volume will be the filling rate minus the leaking rate for times between 5 and 10. Okay, I just plugged this into my calculator. So this is, plugging both of these in, inverse tangent of pi over 2 minus, in my calculator I need x over 10, minus 0 0.03 times 20x minus x squared minus 75. And I let y1 in my calculator equal that whole subtraction of those two functions. Okay, and of course I need x's instead of t's. Go ahead and do that. Pause and plug that into your calculator. And I was perfectly fine with a zoom standard window. So I hit zoom standard. And my graph looked like this. Okay, go ahead and plug that in. Something like that. I was curious, so I did calculate that zero, and I found that that zero occurs at approximately, I had to round 8.149, okay? So you can tell by looking at the graph that yes, there is a place on that time frame between 5 and 10, which is actually over here somewhere, right, where the rate of change of volume changes from a positive to a negative. Okay, so let me just state that carefully. Okay, we're going to cut to the chase, and this is how AP stated their solution for a point. Okay, so we'll read and we'll try to learn what they're looking for in the response, and that was a one-point portion of that problem. Refresh your memory on Part D. I liked Part D. It brought back good memories. So pause here and read Part D once again. Okay, yay, Part D is three points, and this should ring a bell once we start to set this up. So now, the tub is in the shape of a rectangular box. I labeled the dimensions of that box. What is the rate of change of depth of the water at time equal to six minutes? So I labeled that as h because that's what's changing, the height. Even though this is three feet high, the depth of the water is changing at that time. Alrighty, so notice here the volume is length times width times that changing height. So that implies that volume is equal to 2 times h. Does this ring a bell? Remember this? We know and find. Think about what we know and what we can find. Okay, guys and girls, let's relate these rates. This means that the change in volume with respect to time will equal, take the derivative, implicit differentiation, both sides, and that right-hand side becomes 2 dh dt, and I just related the rate of change of volume to the rate of change of the height. Realize we know this because this is the rate of change of volume, which we know is f of t minus l of t, and we need to find the rate of change of the height at time equal to 6. I do need to calculate this, so I need to find w prime of 6. Luckily, this is still in my calculator, so I really just need to evaluate y1 of 6. Please do that. You earn one point for this, one point for that derivative, and let me solve and state my solution. Solve and state your solution.